if you're looking for some resources for helping you figure out, okay, the sustainable operations you're really talking about at the high level, what can I do for my actual business? Well, here are a bunch of resources that we've turned to over time, so we, you know, help clients go to. I think one of the best ones is this Green Office Guide. This is uh, something that was made by the now defunct Sustainable Industries magazine, but it's one of the best ones for if you are running a simple office or organization, this has everything you need to know. The EPA has smart steps for greening your office, and that's also a really good PDF to take a look at. And then if you're wondering, okay, what do we do in terms of engaging our employees, or how can I live you know, my values at home as well? This is a great one, the Green Your Lifestyle link, which is 100 ways to go green. But it's just really a bunch of simple tips that are really you know, more like common sense. It's not asking for radical changes. One of the things that you need to realize when you're talking about sustainable operations and greening your office you need to make sure people realize you're not trying to change everyone into a hemp-wearing, granola-eating uh, vegan who only drives a Prius or walks to work. You know, you're, what you're really saying is, let's find ways in terms of your own operations, the way you're existing at work and at home, and find ways you can make them more sustainable. Running a green team at your office or within your organization is an important thing to understand. Can't tell you how many organizations we've worked with where someone who comes in with a passion for sustainability or let's say they're the CSR coordinator, director, manager, get handed a green team where they have to self-pick a green team. Well, it's one thing to have the green team, but it's another thing to run it effectively. And here are eight tips that we've learned over the years that we've seen with our clients that make it really effective. The first one, you need to hold regular meetings. Now, it doesn't have to be once a month, but you know you need to make sure it puts on people's calendar. If you don't have them set at a regular date and time, people are going to miss them and not take it seriously. Someone needs to be in charge. I know a lot of people, especially in the sustainable movement, want to say, "Oh, well, you know, let's all be in charge." But really, you need one person who's in charge of the green team that's going to hold people accountable. That and you, you know maybe you can delegate the tasks, but one person needs to be in charge. Dividing up the assignments, it can't all fall in the chair. So maybe someone sets up the, the dates and the calendar, someone orders the food, someone else takes notes and minutes and makes sure they're assembled. You need to find a way where, again, it's not all falling on one person. Too often that happens, and then it becomes too much weight to bear for that one individual, and it doesn't empower the rest of the team to really take ownership of the organization's green team. If you have a green team that's got 20 or more people, or even let's say you got eight or ten, you know, the most important thing is that you establish a small committee who can move fast because sometimes you're going to need to make decisions and you can't involve everybody or you can't wait till the next green team meeting. So establish a leadership committee or an executive committee of the green team who can think, keep things going uh, in between meetings or make decisions. Don't create permanent committees. Create, you know, a task force is for a specific task. If you have something going on for, for Earth Day or you have something that you want to do for a commute trip reduction or a competition with your organization, set up a specific task force. Share your successes. This is a really important one. The more you can make other people in the organization look good, the easier it's going to be for you, especially your managers. So I know it's, it's kind of counterintuitive because you want your green team to get a success, and, and you obviously should. But look outside of your green team and find ways you can make other people look good. Because if you can do that, then they're going to become your allies and they're going to talk up your efforts to the management and to their bosses and especially around budget time. Document and keep track of everything you've done. At some point, someone's going to call out your green team and find out if you're being effective or if you've done anything within the organization. So you want to document everything you've done. And there'll be times when you're going to get somebody within the organization who hasn't been paying any attention to you who needs your help, you know, whether it's responding to an RFP or, you know, maybe they have someone from the media who's coming to do an interview and they want to know what your company has done on sustainability. If you can keep track of everything you're doing, you're going to become an internal resource and be very, very valuable to your organization from an operations standpoint. And lastly, within your green team, just develop some agreements. You know, people aren't going to miss X number of meetings. The more informal your meetings that you have, the less you're going to get accomplished. The less accountable you make people, imagine this, the less operations you're going to get changed. So when you have a green team, it's better to have a small committed group of people than a big group where people come in and come out and aren't really caring about if they don't do anything. If, you're, if people aren't ever held accountable, then no one's going to take it seriously. So when you're developing your green team, when you're trying to make your operations more sustainable, Take that extra step and find out, you know, let's make some agreements that people are going to make X number of meetings and this is the contribution they're going to make and this is what they're going to agree to do.
There are literally hundreds of examples of companies out there that have experienced you know, the triple bottom line benefits of sustainability from an operations perspective. Here's just a slide with a few that I just want to highlight um, because they're all over the place. Kaiser Aluminum, they just did an energy assessment and they were able to find by looking at some of their process heating systems, adjusting some of burner controls, making some repairs to some of their furnace doors, etc. They were able to save about 45,000 million BTUs, which, you know, translated into about $360,000 of savings. So their initial $28,000 investment had a one month ROI. Sometimes these things are really valuable. We find that with our clients that by just taking a look at the numbers, by doing that assessment around what they're doing around sustainability and look at their energy, something will pop out. And more often than not, just correcting that very simple thing will have a quick, quick payback and make you look good. So the San Antonio water system worked with a bunch of different San Antonio hotels. Just, you know, and one of them specifically was the Hilton at Palacio del Rio, where they went in and looked with the organization and they said, let's collaborate and let's retrofit hundreds of toilets, faucets, shower heads, you know, your ice machines that are on each floor. And you know what? They were able to cut water use by 50%. And the payback was just over a year. This was had a huge savings, especially as the state of Texas has gone through a major drought over the last couple of years. And here's just an example of General Motors. Now, they've done a, a lot of things at a number of their different plants. And some of them are, you know, they're making amazing claims because they've done amazing work. Here's an example of just one of their operations complexes in Pontiac, where they went through and they adjusted some of their water pumps and made them way more efficient, actually high efficient pumps, which actually dramatically reduce their energy use. And they identified, you know, it sounds like $11,000 in savings. That's not a whole lot when you're looking at manufacturing, but this was their operations complex. So this is just a way where here's some small examples of organizations that are greening their operations and saving money at the same time.